Last week, in the wake of yet another early exit from the NHL playoffs, the Toronto Maple Leafs tortured fan base was beside itself. Social media was a mess. An acoustic song about the team always choking in the playoffs went viral. Cause every year at playoff time, the Maple Leafs fucking choke. A franchise legend's jersey was burned. What did Dougie have to do with this? The list goes on and on and on. One question kept popping up too. Which star players from Toronto's roster deserve to return after coughing up a 3-1 series lead to the underdog Montreal Canadiens? Well, team president Brendan Shanahan and general manager Kyle Dubas have since spoken, and it sounds like the Leafs' so-called core four, forwards Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, John Tavares, and William Nylander, won't be dismantled anytime soon. And guess what? As much as Leafs fans are clamoring for seismic change this offseason, running it back is actually the right thing to do. In fact, not panicking is exactly what will lead the team to playoff success next season and beyond. Remember Mike Babcock? Specifically, remember when the former Leafs bench boss famously warned the fan base way back in May 2015 that there's pain coming. But if you think there's no pain coming, there's pain coming. Yeah, he didn't mean this much. I can't take it anymore. What Babcock was referring to was the club undergoing a proper rebuild after years of spinning its wheels. He was establishing short-term expectations for a storied franchise that had failed to win a playoff series since 2004 and a Stanley Cup since 1967. Six years later, Babcock's long gone, and the Leafs still haven't enjoyed any material success. Sure, five playoff berths are nice, but not once has the team won a series. The worst part is how they've lost. This iteration of the Leafs is 0-7 in closeout games. Matthews, the generational goal-scoring talent, will be 24 this fall. He has three seasons left on his contract. Same goes for the crafty Nylander, who's 25. Playmaking winger Marner and captain Tavares will be 24 and 31, respectively. Both have four years left on their contracts. So, Toronto's true difference makers, who combined eat up roughly half of the team's annual payroll, aren't particularly young anymore. They're in their primes. And the runway for winning a cup together is suddenly quite short, just three years. This tight timeline, mixed with the disappointment of failing to beat the Habs despite finishing first in the North Division, has left management with three options. A major roster shakeup, no meaningful changes, or several minor changes. The first option has merit. While Matthews is a talent no NHL team should ever part with, there are cases to be made for shipping Tavares, Nylander, or Marner out of town. Then again, Tavares' $11 million a year contract, which includes a no-move clause, is basically, well, immovable this late in his career. And Nylander, who's fresh off a five-goal showing in the six-game Montreal series, brings immense value for his $7 million price tag. That leaves Marner, whose reputation is in tatters right now. He's been largely ineffective in the playoffs of late, and the negative feelings drummed up during his 2019 contract dispute with management still linger within pockets of the fan base. Trading Marner, one of the top point producers in the sport, would be tricky because it's very difficult to recoup the value he brings to the lineup over the course of a full season. And since the Leafs aren't looking for picks and prospects, an absolutely perfect scenario would have to present itself for a Marner trade to work out in their favor. The only other impact player who could be moved is number one defenseman and fan favorite Morgan Riley. Riley has one season left on his deal at $5 million a year. But again, why would the Leafs make that trade if they hope to contend in 2021-2022? And no, firing head coach Sheldon Keefe isn't the answer either. He's an open-minded, modern hockey coach who, in a season and a half, has transformed the Leafs' defensive metrics. Which brings us back to the other options on the table for Shanahan and Dubas. It would be foolish to do nothing this offseason. The power play was embarrassing down the stretch and into the playoffs, so assistant coach Manny Maholtra should probably be replaced. The bottom six forward group is in desperate need for a refresh. Last offseason's push to fill out the third and fourth lines with over-the-hill veterans like Joe Thornton and Wayne Simmons didn't exactly pan out. 
In general, the Leafs don't possess enough high-end skill or finishing ability after their first two forward lines. Starter Jack Campbell needs a reliable partner to share the goalie load with. Resigning winger Zach Hyman, who plays with Matthews and Marner, is another top priority. The Leafs' hands are tied by a flat salary cap, and honestly, it's a blessing in disguise. Being a cap-strapped team takes away a lot of the temptation to do something drastic. The hardest part of the team building process is already over for the Leafs. They've accumulated enough talent and endured the types of losses that harden future championship teams. The rest of the job is pure execution, and if we're being frank here, some puck luck. The 2018 Washington Capitals won the cup after a decade of Alex Ovechkin and Nicholas Backstrom knocking on the door. The 2020 Tampa Bay Lightning won the cup after nearly a decade of Steven Stamkos-led teams coming up short, including a dismal first round sweep the year before the cup victory. Good point. Plus, it's not as if on paper the Leafs don't stack up to those cup teams. Muzzin to Marner. Here's Matthews. Back to Marner. Back to Matthews. Scores. That's how they respond. Toronto's roster isn't perfect, but its flaws don't have to be fatal. Management in recent years has supplemented its high-octane core by adding toughness, defense, and leadership. And when you take a step back and evaluate the Canadian series without emotions running high, the result isn't all that shocking. Tavares was injured in Game 1 and missed the rest of the series. Top 4 defenseman Jake Muzzin was injured in Game 6. Top 6 forward Nick Foligno played hurt throughout the series, and Matthews and Marner were stymied by the Canadians. Yeah, elite forwards must break through in the playoffs but Montreal played them tight. Does all of this excuse the lack of a killer instinct component of the Leafs meltdown? No, but they weren't eliminated as a fully healthy group firing in all cylinders either. It's nice to suggest seismic change, but what would markedly improve this team? What's fundamentally wrong with the roster? The answers to both of those questions start with the pieces lining up behind Matthews, Marner, Tavares, and Nylander. It appears Leafs management will see this thing through, and that's something they must do. Because all of the pain endured since Babcock's famous words in 2015 would be for nothing if the core four weren't given at least one more chance at finally flipping the script. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.